Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Snow and I'm here today to talk to you about the Battle of Kings Mountain. Uh, the Battle of Kings Mountain took place um, at the end of the Revolutionary War, right before the Battle of Yorktown, and right on the heels of the Battle of Camden. Um, I'm fairly certain I'm using that the right way. If not, it happened right after the Battle of Camden. Now to give you a little bit of background, the Battle of Camden was a battle between General Horatio Gates of the Colonial Army and uh, Lord Cornwallis of the British Army. And there were several factors that led to Gates's defeat. Um, one of which being that he had largely inexperienced troops who had yet to execute a fixed bayonet charge. And so when the order came down for them to fix bayonets and charge, they did so, but they weren't entirely prepared for the form of battle it would take, and they retreated almost immediately, leading to Gates's left flank completely crumbling and giving the advantage to Lord Cornwallis, who would take the victory, and a whole lot of supplies from the colonial army. Anyone who's studied the War for Independence knows that supplies were in uh, high demand, and to lose a lot of supplies to the enemy was a really bad thing. To make matters worse, this came after the victory at Saratoga, which Horatio Gates had also led on, and so it seemed that the battles for the for American independence were kind of pendulum swaying. They were going this way and that way. Uh, would they be British? Would the British win, or would the Colonials win? It was, it was bad for morale all around. So what happens is Cornwallis sends one of his uh, commanders, which was Major Ferguson. He gives Ferguson a thousand men and tells him to go to South Carolina, North Carolina and Tennessee region, uh, to to the South Carolina and Tennessee region, my bad, to tap into a supposed wellspring of loyalists that were there. They had heard rumors that there were there was a high volume of loyalists in uh, South Carolina and Tennessee. So, eh, it seemed like a like it was a good chance. So, what happens is Ferguson is sort of between North Carolina and Tennessee. He's kind of weaving back and forth. And uh, colonial forces in the area were very small, uh, which is one of the reasons this, this part of the war is called the Fugitive War. Um, a group of several people, including uh, John Sevier, for whom Sevier County is named in Tennessee. Uh, Sevier would be the first governor of Tennessee and is one of my favorite uh, Revolutionary War figures, uh, assembled forces as quickly as they could in response to a challenge that Ferguson had given that if they did not stop resisting British rule, Ferguson would, well, to be blunt, kill them, their families, and destroy their homes and property. So, the Colonials, uh, John Sevier and several others, organize a force of around 400 men, mountain men, and they have only the supplies they can carry in their pockets or in satchels. And they start, they go to, they go after Ferguson, uh, engaging in several small battles with loyalists, uh, Tories, as they were called at the time, along the way. Now, somewhere along the line, Ferguson got the impression that he was outnumbered uh, by this ragtag group of colonials. And so he begins advancing towards Charlotte. That's his, that's his end goal. He wants to get to Charlotte. Uh, which is where Cornwallis is round about. Um, but between Ferguson and Charlotte is Kings Mountain. And so Ferguson goes up Kings Mountain, and um, as Severe and his colleagues pursue Ferguson, they join up with uh, Colonels Tracy, Cleveland, and Brandon, who had about an additional 300 men with them, which upped the colonial forces pursuing Ferguson to 700. Now, when you get to King's Mountain, um, it was a wooded area with a clearing. The clearing was where the British were, and the colonials were behind. The, were in the wooded area. And so, what happens is the British assume their standard battle formations, which, in most situations in open warfare, work. Because you have two masses of men aiming guns and firing at each other. 
Eh, that's okay. It was a good strategy for the time, but for the terrain, it was not a good idea. And this was a tactical mistake on Ferguson's part. The men of King's Mountain, they, the mountain men, they decided that they wouldn't mass. They couldn't, really. They were in the forest, and that made it impossible. So instead, they hide behind trees and take as many pot shots as they can at Ferguson and his men. Ferguson, proud officer that he was, um, was sitting atop a white horse and giving orders to his men. And whenever his men would fix bayonets and charge, hold on, there's a there's a construction vehicle driving this way. I'm not sure if it's turning. It's not turning. Just one sec. Well, regardless. Um, so the colonial forces... Gonna wait for it to pass. Hold on. So anyhow, colonial forces, um, were just firing away at the British, who even though they had a very effective tactic of volley fire, which had, uh, the men in front would fire and then fall to the rear to reload, while the men that were right behind them would fire, and it would cycle through, leading to a really high rate of fire, uh, especially for the time period. And so what happens is um, the British would fix bayonets and charge, and the Colonials would scrabble down the mountain, and as the British would return to position, the Colonials would scramble right back up and start firing again. Uh, things really went sideways for the British when Ferguson, still sitting atop that shiny white horse, got shot off of said horse and died. Uh, which led to a breakdown of discipline in the British forces, and the mountain men pretty much rushed in the brutal melee that followed. Pretty much all of the British forces were wiped out, and those that were not killed outright were captured. Um, what makes King's Mountain important is that it restored a lot of resources that had been lost at Camden. Uh, a lot of ammunition fell into colonial hands, food also fell into colonial hands, and the loss at King's Mountain, the loss of Ferguson and a thousand men, led Cornwallis to shift his attention to Virginia. Instead of staying in the Carolinas where he had superiority, he decided that he would focus on the seat of colonial power, which indeed was the seat of colonial power, and in the battle that happened at Yorktown, Cornwallis would lose, and American independence would be gained in the Treaty of Paris that followed soon thereafter. So, I suppose one could say that without the Battle of King's Mountain, American independence would have been harder fought, harder achieved, and possibly not achieved at all, but that's a little counterfactual, so we won't dive into that now. But regardless, it is one of the most important battles of Revolutionary War history, or Revolutionary War military history as well. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you enjoy your next eight week of classes, if you have them. If not, I hope you enjoy your time off. I hope you enjoy your holiday season. And I hope our paths cross again someday. You've been a great class. God bless. See you around.